Welcome to our uh, little uh, wine party here tonight in the lounge. I know that some of you had the chance of trying some of the local specialties of the Wachau Valley, and this place is really full of delicacies. And that's why we invited uh, um, three people locally from here who are very passionate about these local produce, not necessarily only about the wine, but all the others. Therefore, uh, I'm not wasting time because there's so much fun waiting for you and of course, some interesting information as well. The story beyond the local wine. So please welcome our WWT, the Wacha Wine Team. <laughs> Just to begin, so welcome to our wine tasting. My name is Trinka. If you say anything that sounds vaguely like it, I will answer, although I try to it Trinka first. Um, very important back here, there's a wonderful Julia, Hannes and Anne-Marie Schreiber. These are the people who make the wines you'll be trying. They're not just pouring the wines, this is the Winters family that makes the wines you're drinking. So a lot of work, and they'll be really popular with you because they'll give you something to drink. <laughs> We'll be trying three different wines today, just so you can pace yourself. If you don't want to finish any of them, there is a little silver carafe on the tables that you can empty that out into. Just do pour very carefully because that's tomorrow's blend. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> They'll be coming around with the first wine now. These wines are produced in Rossans which is, you were talking to Dernstein this morning, just across the river, you probably saw some of the vineyards that these wines came from. And a way to actually talk about the specific wine in your glass, as far as looking at colors, flavors, aromas, we'll do all of that. We'll wait till everyone's got it in their glass, because I don't know about you, but my wine is very dry. <laughs> um, and Austrians like their wine dry, but not that dry. <laughs> so, um, but this first wine is called Grüner Weltliner. If you drink enough, you can pronounce that. Um, <laughs> the name's not translated. It is the quintessential Austrian wine. It's 60% of our wines. Now, being an overwhelmingly white wine region, that's saying a lot. Now, the first thing you want to do with a white wine is look at the color. Most of you have got the last ones will be arriving here. Um, what a white wine can tell you with its color. There are base colors for each variety. You can, I mean, if you look at something that's very, very light, there are certain varieties you can eliminate right away just by looking at it. But there's also a general tendency that the darker the wine is into yellow, the older, the more mature the grapes were when it was harvested, the stronger the wine is in extract and in alcohol. If a wine actually gets into the golden color, then you're looking at a white that's 10 to 15 years old. Which often brings people to, ooh, you can drink a white wine that old. Quite definitely, you can drink white wines that are 40 to 50 years old. It depends on the quality and strength of the wine when you started aging it. And those wines, like I said, have a gold, almost an old gold color to them. And their flavor is more like that of sherry. It's something you'd have as an aperitif, not something you'd drink with a meal. This one has got a gorgeous, nice rich yellow, which is typical for the Gruna Vedrina. A slight hint of the green in it, perhaps. And when you look at it, do you see that layer, shimmering layer, floating on the top? That's what's called the extract. Basically, it's everything in your wine that's not colored water. Um, it's the body, the fruit, the alcohol. And the extract can tell you quite a bit about a wine. Wine experts can look at that extract and tell you just by looking at the thickness of it and the variations in color, within a year or two, how old that wine is. I'm declaring you all experts now. With Austrian whites, it's pretty basic. 80% of our whites are drunk within a year of having been produced. Many follow shortly after that. So you can pretty much just hold that up and be like, oh yeah, 2013, 2014. You'll be right. <laughs> this one's a 2014. This extract also gets stronger and thicker with the strength of the wine. When you sway your glass, 
You get what are called the legs in English. I much prefer the German term. In German, these are called the church windows. So this is a religious experience. Okay? But um, when you tip it up and look, the more slowly those dissipate, the more slowly they move down the side of the glass, the stronger, the richer your wine is. What you, of course, also done with the legs while swirling it around, you've released the aromas. So have a smell. And very typical for the wines of the Wachau are their fruity elements. In this case, tart fruits, green apples, maybe a pear, but if it's a pear, it's a green pear, not a yellow one. Of course, rather than just smelling and looking, you probably want to taste it. But before you do, and I did see that, um, <laughs> I'll teach you an important word in German. In German, we say Prost. Now, you're going to care what's Prost. It's an O, okay? Brust is a female body part. You don't want to be saying that to people. Oh, Prost. So if you just lift your glass and say Prost, that's fine. However, if you have glass contact, you must have eye contact, or it's considered very rude, and you've got to pay the round. Oh. 